Fire. How do you put it out? With foam or powder? If that can really put it out, it must be very special. Where does it come from? How does it do it? What is in it? Our reporter Felix Schlebusch got himself some fire extinguishers. We examined the two most common systems and want to know what's inside. One looks like foam. Some kind of chemical, perhaps. The other extinguisher is causing quite a cloud. And there's a lot coming out of this extinguisher, too. I wonder what's in there. This feels like powder. And here we've got something foamy. But what it is exactly, no idea. We want to find out what's inside. Felix gets a little help from chemist Dr. Andreas Kornmüller. There's no substance he doesn't know. And demolition expert Wolfgang Stabe. Nothing stands in his way for long. Gentlemen, I want to know what's in here. How can we look inside? Difficult, it's under pressure. There's so much power behind it, basically you can only open it by force. You'd have to open it with an explosive charge. Can't we cut it open? No, you'd have parts of it flying around everywhere. Wolfgang takes 40 grams of explosive to punch a hole in the steel casing. This way the pressure can escape without danger. Wolfgang, what can happen now? First of all, it's a world premiere. I really don't know. Never done it before? No, never. And I can imagine it will have a big effect. There's a lot of pressure behind it, 24 bar. So we'll just try it out. We are blowing up the powder fire extinguisher first. So we'll soon find out what's inside. The power behind 24 bar is amazing. The blast makes a hole first, but the pressure in the extinguisher makes the contents really shoot out and spread. What kind of powder is this? Well, we can examine it right away. I've got my spoon here. Let's take this one. I suspect that it's an ammonium compound. Perhaps you can explain what that is? It's like fertilizer you spread on a field. There's fertilizer in it. That's fertilizer. If I pour caustic soda on it now, it should produce ammonia right away. You can smell that very nicely. It smells so pungent like smelling salts. There's nothing but salts in the fire extinguisher and they are called ammonium sulfate and ammonium phosphate. Ammonium is a source of nitrogen. Plants need it. Phosphate is a source of phosphorus. Plants need that too. So it's just a regular fertilizer. What? Fertilizer puts fire out? So what's in the foam fire extinguisher then? Here we go again. And I'm going to arm the system now. Attention. So we can blast. In emergencies, the pressure in the extinguisher is important. That's how the contents come out quickly and extinguish the fire. Just how strong it is can be seen here. When the pressure escapes after the blast, the fire extinguisher takes off. I've come across this before. It's the foam I saw earlier. Andreas, what is it? Andreas, what is this? It's just normal soapy foam. You can smell it. it. Smells like soap, like washing up liquid. So it's not dangerous? No, not at all. Okay, so now I know what's in there. Now I'd like to know how it works. For this, Felix sets off to find another expert. In the meantime, we look back into history. The first fire extinguisher was used as early as 1715. The artist Zacharias Greil was fascinated by the idea that man could control fire. His idea, pour water onto the fire in one fell swoop without endangering any people. To this end, he took a wine barrel and developed the fire extinguishing bomb. So first he poured water into a barrel. And then he took some gunpowder, of all things. In those days, that was only used to make weapons. Finally, he made a fuse and then put it all into the barrel. But would his invention actually work? Greyer tried it out. 
he started a fire, then quickly had to ignite the barrel and throw it into the fire, where it exploded. And indeed, the barrel broke, the water poured onto the flames and the fire was at least contained. To find out how fire extinguishers work today, our reporter Felix has now met up with an expert. Hey Jose. Hey, Jose. I found out there are different fire extinguishers. One contains a soapy solution, the other a fertilizer powder. Why are there different ones and how do they actually work? It's quite simple. I'll show you. Come with me. Generally speaking, in order to work, every fire extinguisher, no matter what's in it, needs a nozzle right at the front to work. How exactly does this nozzle work? It's quite simple. As you can see, if we just unscrew it, we have a wide hose outlet here, but because of the nozzle, the end's very narrow. Narrow, it's tapered. Right. It's important the powder doesn't come out all at once, but that it can really be evenly dosed across all the burning material. So, it's the nozzle and the pressure that turns soap suds into foam and fertilizer into a big cloud of powder. In a little experiment, Felix shows us how this works. He fills a bicycle in a tube with soap suds and pumps in a lot of air. This increases the pressure inside. The narrow valve is the nozzle in this case, that's where the foam squirts out. The powder extinguisher works like this. Felix blows hard into a glass with flour and it can only come out at the top. But how exactly do soapy foam and fertilizer extinguish fires? We want to find out and build up a pile of wood like the one used in fire extinguisher tests. So what kind is this here? That's an ABC powder extinguisher and your fertilizer's in here. Right then, let's get started. You put it on the ground. The important thing is that you pull the safety tab, then you hit it once, and then it's important that you don't run into the middle of the fire from downwind and extinguish from front to back. And that's all. And that's all. That's all. Actually quite simple. But how does the powder extinguisher work? The powder melts at 70 degrees and forms a glassy layer on the wood. This layer doesn't let any air through, so the flames are smothered. And how does the soap foam fire extinguisher work? We build another pile of wood and try that out too. This time Felix gets to put out the fire. As you can see, a lot less comes out of the foam extinguisher. And yet, it works. The foam lays itself onto the wood. On the one hand, it cools it down. On the other hand, it forms a dense carpet that starves the fire of air. Here too, the flames are smothered, just like placing a glass over a burning candle. But is one of the two extinguishers better? We test them on a stronger fire, 20 liters of heptane, a liquid similar to petrol. That means it's much more dangerous. That's why I'm well prepared. Felix also has to put on protective gear, because heptane can reach 800 degrees Celsius, greatly increasing the risk of injury. Felix wants to extinguish it himself, first with the fertilizer again. And fire! Wow, it's getting really hot! Now go around it. The heptane burns much stronger than the wood. The powder has a harder time, has to fight its way in, but then it settles on the liquid and can finally smother the fire. Out it goes! But can the simple foam fire extinguisher do it too? Fires are down and off we go. In you go and then keep along the wall. Along what? Along the wall. Now you go to the front, to the source of the fire, then you fan out always to the side. So now go round. The flames are big and powerful. The foam looks small in comparison. Will it work? So you see, you have a foam carpet. Try to close it. Now stop. Just stop. That's it. And now go closer to it and just try to hit the spots up against the wall where there are still flames. It works. But here the difficulty becomes apparent. The heptane is constantly in motion, so the fire keeps breaking through the foam surface. Nevertheless, 
both extinguishers also put out the stronger fire. Still, there is a difference. The powder stays put and makes quite a mess. The foam dries away like water and is a far better solution for use at home. Fire extinguishers today don't work much differently than they did more than 100 years ago. The first globally successful fire extinguisher was invented by Wilhelm Graf. Inspired by fire hoses, he came up with the shape. Lots of space at the back, a nozzle at the front. This cone-shaped container was filled with six liters of salt water. For the necessary pressure, Graf relied on chemistry. He attached a cartridge containing hydrochloric acid. At the push of a button, it was opened, flowed inside and the reaction with the salt water produced the gas carbon dioxide. This caused the water to shoot out and extinguish the flames. Graf secured the patent and founded the Minimax company. By 1960, many millions of these cones had been sold. One reason for this was the often somewhat dubious advertising posters. Fire extinguishers as we know them today have been around since 1907. If we look at today's versions, only the shape is different. And basically, it's just a red metal can with a hose and a nozzle attached. Inside, plenty of pressure and soap suds or fertilizer. Sounds very simple. That's why I want to build a fire extinguisher myself, but it has to be this big. The biggest in the world, in fact. So back to chemist Andreas and blaster Wolfgang. Their ingredients are a very large red metal can, a normal compressor, gallons of washing up liquid and a connection for a proper hose borrowed from the fire brigade. So let's go. Because pressurizing containers, if they've not been tested for it, is strictly forbidden. We are using this officially pressure-tested gas tank. This is what we do next. To keep it clean, we use a funnel, of course. I could just lift it up, Wolfgang. No, too difficult. The three of them fill 2,000 litres of water into the converted gas tank. A fire extinguisher contains about 3% soap surfactants. For us, that means 60 litres of washing up liquid. So, Wolfgang, get the funnel off. Right, wonderful, it fits. And on goes the hose. Then comes the pressure. We pump the air into the tank, through the valve where normally excess pressure can escape. The connections are standardized, that's no problem, but then we have to wait. The pressure only rises slowly. And this is our test object, a wrecked car. Wolfgang wants to blow it up with a petrol bomb. For this experiment, we drove to a closed-off area. Here we are allowed to do something like this. But will we be able to put it out? Now there is enough pressure. And Felix is ready. Andreas, do you think it'll work? Definitely, with so much foam it'll work. What do you think, Wolfgang? It's big enough. I don't know if it'll work. The fire's really strong, so let's give it a try. The car burns relentlessly. Normally only the fire brigade would go anywhere near a fire like this. Is our homemade fire extinguisher up to the job? Just look at that, it really works. 2,000 litres of water, ordinary washing up liquid and plenty of pressure can actually take on the flames. We built the biggest fire extinguisher in the world and it works fantastically well. Against a mass of foam like this, the fire doesn't stand a chance. 